mean, many of these songs are so dramatic. Um, <laughs> they have a kind of intensity. And uh, to have to reside in that night after night on this tour has is, is, is been a very f fascinating uh, challenge. Uh, physically, emotionally, um, in the throat, and in the heart. <laughs> it's very interesting, you know, having to deal with that. And um, I, uh, I think a, a lot of these songs are, are much more uh, maybe impulsive than what I've written in the past. And that, I think that was a, a deliberate decision. When I was working on some new material, I decided I wanted to do away with um, concept and narrative and form and do away with um, uh, setting and character, do away with history, geography, do away with all of that and just just to um, start from here, from within the body and the heart, the brain, you know, the, the spinal cord and the, the nervous system, the body itself, feeling and touch sensation. And I also, uh, I decided to apply that to the sounds themselves. So I did away with, mostly I did away with the acoustic guitar and the banjo and the piano and decided to, um, to write a lot with just sound. Uh, especially on the Age of Odds, the, that album, I decided I was just going to experiment and just run things through processing and pedals and sequencers and use drum machines and keyboards and uh, forget about music altogether and just focus on instinct, the sound. In the beginning, you know, there was like the sound, the sound of creation, and I just wanted to focus on that. Um, but I spent a long time doing that in my studio alone for months and months and months, just uh, creating sounds and not getting anything done, and it was really frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I just had all this, I had all this fun playing sounds, but it was very lonely. And then, uh, and then I, a friend of mine introduced me to this uh, folk artist named Royal Robertson. And, uh, and all of a sudden everything shifted for me, because I decided to use Royal Robertson as a foil. Uh, Royal was an African-American Southern painter, sign painter, folk artist uh, from Baldwin, Louisiana. He lived in the middle of nowhere in this little village, little town. And he painted signs for local businesses. And he lived in the house that he built himself. Um, and he had a beautiful wife named Adele. And they had 12 children together. And uh, they were very, very poor but they had love and spirit, and they had the Lord, and they had art, and they had royals, gifts, spiritual gifts of prophecy, of seeing to the future and seeing to the past, because he was a self-proclaimed prophet, a minister, a soothsayer, and he was obsessed with numerology and astrology, and he had this obsession with outer space, and, uh, and so they had this, this very sort of fantasy world together, him and his wife and his children in their little home that they created them, themselves. Um, and Royal, even though he, he, for a living he made signs and uh, painted police cars and ice cream trucks and painted murals for the local clubs, he also did his own artwork. Um, and his work was basically a rendering of his imagination and the visions that he saw uh, uh, during his sleep, or when he had out-of-body experiences, or when he was visited by spaceships and UFOs, or by God, and by angels, and by uh, kind of ghosts and spectral shapes. And he would draw all these things from, from what he saw in his visions. And he called himself, uh, what did he call himself? It was patriarchal, mystical prophet Royal Robertson, Libra artist. He called himself Libra artist, because that was his astrological sign. And his, um, his work so consumed him near the end of his life. There's one, there's one interesting fact about Royal is, is that um, his work so consumed him and his vision so consumed him that eventually he lost all sense of reality. And he started to believe that his own children were, were aliens or were bastard children from other men. He started to accuse his wife, Adele, of cheating on him and of whoring and prostitution and called her a harlot. And he started to believe the CIA and the FBI was after him. And he started to, um, and he, he only had a relationship with his work at that point. And his wife and his children were forced to move out. And for the last few decades of his life, Royal 
spends um, most of his time alone in his house working on his art. Um, and he worked on poster board and he used uh, house paint and glitter and magic markers. Um, and he did collages, he cut out from newspapers and things. And he was inspired especially by uh, sci-fi movies and comic books and from the Bible and from numerology, Nordic mythology and um, astrology. And uh, I'm not sure exactly why I was drawn to Royal. I think it was his, it was his insanity and his schizophrenia and his delusions of grandeur and his, uh, his, his obsession with outer space and with aliens. Um, all of that sort of rendered with this sort of uh, particular heartache and loneliness uh, for, for having been abandoned by his wife. And in his mind, he thought his wife cheated on him, but in reality, um, she was the most loving and loyal woman in the world. And she left just for her own safety and for the safety of her own children. And one theme that runs throughout Royal's work, whether it's about whether, whether his, his paintings are of um, architectural renderings of the utopian city, or of spacecraft, or of machine guns, or of you know um, landscapes of the apocalypse and the end of the world, Adele um, continues to show uh, a uh, sort of a uh, she, she plays a, a role in every almost every painting, um, and I think and he he called her a harlot and a prostitute, and I think it was po possibly his guilt and his his inability to reconcile with having lost her that drove him into this sort of distortion of vengeance toward her and towards all women of the world. And, um, and I guess that as I was working on all this music, I found in Royal the kind of this, this, this vastness, the vastness of his imagination to be very inspiring. And I felt an affinity, affinity to that, but I also felt very juvenile as I was working on this music, as if it was uh, something of uh, material that you'd write in high school. And I, I felt like a lot of my music was, my new stuff was very uh, primal and instinctual and hormonal. And Royal's work has that kind of element too, um, even though it's very sophisticated and it shows a kind of scholarship of, of many things, it's still very, very primal. And it's all about lo loneliness and sensation and the desire to connect with people um, in spite of his antisocial um, state of mind. Um, so anyway, a lot of the, the new music is sort of uses Royal as a, as a reference point. And, uh, um, and that's why um, I'm using a lot of his work in the album, and we're also using his work in the video projections this evening. And um, so this is a song, this next song is a, one that I wrote for him. It's a reality check, and it's called Get Real, Get Right. Thank <laughs> you. 